This is KGW News at Sunrise. A new program in Oregon hopes to create the best worker benefits in the country. Coming up this morning, what needs to happen to get 12 weeks of paid leave? Plus, a group of Oregonians advocated for change this Mother's Day. I don't think that addiction is a moral failure. I think addiction is a disease. What they want to see Oregon do to address the opioid crisis. Also coming up this morning, this mother-daughter duo hopes to make your next shave a sustainable one. More on their mission when we visit their workshop. And if you're into live and good music, look no further than Fear No Music. This is a special performance all morning we're getting here in the hills of Southwest Portland. They're gonna be performing at the Old Church Concert Hall later tonight, but this morning we are live at the show director's home for a preview of what you can expect. She looks so graceful there, playing the piano. That is lovely. Good morning, happy Monday. Hope all you moms had a great Mother's Day. Yeah, and you very too. relaxing, got to sleep in. Oh yeah, that's always <laughs> nice. A little bit of everything weather-wise, and boy, we're waking up to chilly temperatures. It's, it's crazy. I mean, this has officially reached the level of being nuts, how long this <laughs> right? cold weather pattern okay. has been with us. Right now at the airport, sitting at 42 degrees, but there are 30s to be found. Forest Grove, 34. I mean, look at this map. Most areas are in the 30s. Scappoose, Beaverton, Gresham, Camas, Happy Valley, 36 degrees. Good morning to you. Salem holding at 40, but Kaiser 39, Corvallis 39, Dallas 37. And some of these numbers are actually a couple degrees warmer than they were a couple of hours ago. <laughs> so we'll call it chilly 40 degrees on average at the bus stop this morning. Uh, radar is showing just a few spotty showers out there and eventually as the day gets going, we will get into some scattered shower activity. Not a lot of rain today, but some 51 at noon, 56 degrees and the kids get out of school as opposed to say 68, which would be normal. Back to you. Rob, thank you. We start with breaking news out of Southeast Portland. Police say a woman died after a shooting on the East Bank Esplanade at Salmon Street. Officers responded to the scene about 1145 last night and found the woman dead. One person has been detained, but we don't know their name or anything else about what happened. Right now, the Esplanade at Southeast Salmon Street is closed. Well, Oregon is trying to create the best worker benefits in the country and a new pro program could put that within reach. It would provide 12 weeks of paid leave for family health emergencies. Crystal Kumwe explains what that means for you and your employer. The paid leave Oregon program will allow workers to take paid time off to address some of life's most important moments. Well, I think it's very exciting that Oregon is a trendsetter in this area and that we're one of the first states to be implementing paid leave. Karen Hamabaugh is the director of the program developed by the Oregon Employment Department. Paid leave Oregon includes family leave for family health emergencies, medical leave for a worker's own health, and also safe leave for victims of sexual assault, domestic violence, harassment, or stalking. It's unfortunate that it has taken until 2022 for policies like this to be in place. But Brandy Salover is glad. the executive director of nonprofit Sexual Assault Resource Center. It really takes, again, that burden off of folks' shoulders to, to know that they're going to, it's not going to be leave that they're going to have to take unpaid or um, they could potentially lose their job. If workers have been with their employer for more than 90 days, their job is protected while on paid leave. The paid leave program is funded by a trust fund. Hamobal says both workers and employers will contribute to the fund through payroll taxes. But the maximum contribution rate would be 1% of gross payroll. And then that shared contribution where the business is going to pay 40% of the contribution and the individual pays 60%. All employers except federal and tribal governments are required to participate in the paid leave program. It's so important for us to make sure that we're equalizing the playing field and really addressing generational poverty that has occurred for people who aren't able to take time off. Employers will begin payroll contributions in January 2023 and workers will be able to apply for benefits in September of next year. I'm Crystal Kumwe for KGW News. Portland police say they've arrested a former freelance journalist accused of a week-long string of vandalism that targeted houses of worship. 
34-year-old Michael Bivens is in custody, suspected of trying to set fire to the Muslim Community Center in Portland and breaking windows at two synagogues here. A surveillance camera recorded one of those crimes last week. We talked to the rabbi at Congregation Beth Israel. I'm really pleased that uh, law enforcement, many different bureaus of law enforcement, uh, took these uh, incidents so seriously and worked very, very diligently to, uh, to make this arrest. Bivens faces charges of arson and criminal mischief. He's in the Multnomah County Jail this morning. He worked as a freelance journalist who covered protests in Portland over the last 10 years. He shared video with news organizations, including KGW. Here are some other headlines we're following this morning. Portland police say a suspect and officers opened fire on each other Friday night before the suspect was shot in Northeast Portland. So police pulled over a car for what they call several violations near Northeast 78th and Mason. Police say four officers were involved in the shooting. That suspect is in the hospital with serious injuries. That investigation is ongoing and the officers involved are on leave. Also Friday night, Beaverton police were investigating a deadly shooting. Officers were called to Southwest McCory Court and found 37-year-old Levi Pierce shot. He later died at the hospital. Police arrested his roommate, 34-year-old Austin Sutton. Sutton's now facing multiple charges, including murder. Well, the highly contagious bird flu has been found in Oregon for the first time since 2015. This case is in a flock of birds living in the backyard of a home in Lynn County. Some of those birds have now died. The Oregon Department of Agriculture says the rest will be humanely euthanized. The CDC says this strain of bird flu does not present an immediate public health threat. And that's a quick look at some of your headlines. Well, overdosing on opioids kills at least five people every single week in Oregon. So a group of moms spent Mother's Day trying to get the state's attention. They want leaders here to step up their efforts to help people who suffer from addiction. Devin Haskins joins us this morning. And Devin, Oregon is one of the worst in the nation when it comes to accessing treatment. Yeah, Brenda, not only is Oregon the worst in the nation for access to treatment, but it also has the largest percentage of the population that suffers from illegal drug addictions. Those moms hope to get Governor Brown's direct attention. Standing in the rain <laughs> along the busy street in Southeast Portland, a group holding signs trying to get a message out. We're tired of this. We're tired of Oregon not doing what they need to do. You see, each person here has a connection to someone battling addiction or in recovery. Some have even lost their loved one to the disease. My son is an amazing human uh, who it has been struggling with addiction, uh, meth and fentanyl for five years. I have been fortunate enough that I am in long-term recovery and my children have not followed me down that, the path of addiction. Thank goodness, I pray every day for that. I'm here with a friend of mine's mom who lost her daughter two years ago to alcoholism. Kelly Hernandez is out here for her son, Trevor. I worry about him every second of every day. I wake up in the middle of the night worrying about him. Trevor is 27, homeless, and has been addicted to opioids since 19 after a bout with meningitis. It first started with Percocet and progressed to an addiction with fentanyl. He's my baby and fentanyl is a deadly drug. I don't think that addiction is a moral failure. I think addiction is a disease, and I think that the symptoms of that disease are crime and homelessness. In 2020, Oregon released a five-year plan to address the opioid issue plaguing the state. Voters even approved Measure 110 to send almost $300 million to make treatment options more accessible. Some say little has been done since, so they took their message to the top. We're going to head to the governor's house. With a rose and a flag in hand. These are people that have passed. That flag with more than just a name on it, but representing a person. There's Katie Buckle. That's my friend. She was 28. They walked just a few blocks away to Governor Kate Brown's personal residence. They placed those flags outside her house and stood in a circle to remember those they have all lost to the disease. This has got to improve. The governor and the electeds have to do something. My son is a gifted writer. 
He was an amazing slam poet. And you hit it on the head when you said no child ever wants to grow up to be an alcoholic, an addict, or homeless. For Kelly Hernandez, she won't give up on her son Trevor. She hopes the state doesn't either. Moms are powerful. They're powerful women. And we want something to change for our kids. Devin Haskins, KGW News. And a Portland Mother's Day tradition returned for the ninth year yesterday as people walked in Portland's Alphabet District, raising money for those in need. This is the return of the Raining Roses Walk. The fundraiser is a 5K to help raise money and awareness for women and children experiencing poverty and trauma. The walk started with a pre-party at Rosehaven's brand new shelter. They had everything from mimosas to music, and organizers say it's no coincidence they did this on Mother's Day. You know, Mother's Day can be a really hard day for folks. Not all of us still have our moms, and especially for people that are living outside and in trauma, it can be a particularly hard day. So that's why we do this on this day is to celebrate those women and celebrate, you know, anybody who's a special woman in your life, you know, anybody who's been a mother figure to you. That's what we're here to celebrate today. As they walked the neighborhood, they stopped in at partnering businesses for giveaways and to make it more fun, people dressed up in costumes. And hopefully raincoats oh, added you know they had on them. the top they had umbrellas. or umbrellas. Yes. We had a Mother's Day downpour. We had a Mother's Day hailstorm. We had a Mother's Day a, a break of sun. I mean, we really did yeah. have it all yesterday. Don't ever accuse me of not getting you something for Mother's <laughs> That's right. Day. Thank you, Rod. <laughs> wow. Uh, boy, I tell you what, this is just going on and going on. This chilly weather pattern with us through at least Friday mm -hmm. at this point of this week. Here's a look. Notice the jet stream is way down in California. This is the main jet. And this is what we track primarily in the winter months, right? And we're, when the jet's down to your south, you're in the colder part of air uh, in your hemisphere, and we certainly are. And yesterday's temperatures were about 10 degrees below normal, average high and low for the day. Today we're going to be about 12 degrees below normal if you average the high and the low together. We have a few scattered showers in the radar, but, but not much here on the west side. There, is a disturbance producing some decent snow out south of Baker City along 84 going into the Boise area. Boise reporting freezing temperatures and snow flurries at this hour, by the way. John Day, good morning. You've been reporting snow flurries at this hour. Here's Futurecast at 930 this morning. Scattered shower activity. Snow level today in the mountains, 3,000 feet. Uh, and again, we'll see improving conditions up there during the day. Uh, th there could be a hail shower today because the air is so cold off again, but generally I expect just sun breaks and kind of typical scattered stuff around. Not looking for a lot of total rain today. And, and while the rain chance is not zero tomorrow, the odds of dry weather tomorrow and Wednesday are actually pretty good. Okay, here are the numbers. Mid 30s in Newport, Eugene 38, holding at 40 or just above from Salem up into Kelso, 44 out in the Dalles, 32 in Bend. Freezing temps in John Day, where I said they're reporting some light snow this morning. Here's Timberline. Timberline picked up 22 inches of snow on Saturday for the 24-hour period. They're at 20 right now. And I want to show you the Highway 26 is, yeah, that's snow covered. So if you can delay your trip over the Cascades once the sun comes up, um, ODOT and warming temps will quickly get those passes cleared off, and they'll be in good shape during the day. 56 today. 61 tomorrow, 63 Wednesday, primarily dry. The next front comes in on Thursday. 22 inches at Timberline. Absolutely Woo. unbelievable, Rod. Thank you. Coming up next, it is all in the family for this particular business partnership. I guess you could say this mother and daughter from Newburgh are smooth operators. We have more on their new venture <laughs> after the break.